Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about Super League and um, there'll be no Brighton preview today guys. I hope you respect my decision in that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be uh, mine and Tom's. I've got a boyfriend on today. It's going to be our thoughts and feelings on it. Um, the damage this has done already and what it means for fans and um, so yeah i'm not going to go into the whole situation of talking about the actual super league because you guys will already know this news broke yesterday it's been a day this is more just a reaction to it and also talking about more as it's unfolded because obviously the news broke yesterday there's been so much going on social media today so much has been said so it's more all unfolded we know a little bit more about what's going on and um, so yeah so it's just an a reaction um, and as I said I, I don't want to talk about the ins and outs a bit too much because you guys already know um, so I'll ask Tom's thoughts and feelings first and then I'll say mine so off you go Tom yes well obviously I said yeah with the whole thing it's just it's basically just going to tear football apart it's basically all the investors basically getting into each other and just saying oh yeah let's all just create our own league let's all make loads of money from it and let's just forget football entirely you know let's turn this into the franchise let's turn this into the nfl and everything like that it's just going to ruin any sort of competition it's just going to absolutely ruin just like just football it's going to ruin football entirely you know obviously you've got the uh the three sort of american investors at united uh liverpool and arsenal in the premier league you know they're the sorts of ones that have been pushing for it the most and so they'll all just be saying yeah let's just turn it into the NFL it's fine you know we're all we've all got loads of money I'm not going to swear but yeah screw the rest of them and everything like that so it's just a mess and it's just the rich getting richer and just taking advantage of well I mean in this COVID time taking advantage of any teams that might be struggling, really, it just it just takes the mick out of them. So, I agree with everything you said, and I'm just generally sad, angry, disappointed, frustrated, concerned, shocked, speechless, mm -hmm. disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, I I honestly feel yeah, I feel really speechless. To be honest, if you sit down with a piece of paper and actually rip down every emotion, I'm sure a lot of fans would have nearly every emotion down on that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. like, it, it's not okay. It, it's just simply no. not okay. Um, and now, and do you know something? It's like on social media, I haven't saw one person in support of it. And that speaks no. volumes. There's no division here. Everyone's on the same side. Everyone's saying no, and now that's. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen I've seen on Twitter a lot of there's some people. Yeah, you know, I, th I think they are Americans and things like that. Saying, "Oh, it's, it's not too bad." Like, yeah, but you. That's basically what the MLS is. So you, this is basically your football. This is soccer. I think I think someone said this. It was Dave Young, actually. I think it was said this is no longer football. This is now soccer, and it's just thinking. Oh right, yeah, fair enough. The US they have their own league set up and things like that but it's an entirely as everyone knows, it's an entirely different culture mm -hmm. across in Europe and it thrives off competition it doesn't thrive off franchise yeah it's the, it's capitalist America that what they're basically trying to bring to Europe which it's just it's yeah it's just rich getting richer and it's just taking the mick out of the working class you know Liverpool one of the most well-known working class clubs in the world and they've got this guy who says, you know what? Yeah, forget everyone else. Yeah, I'm, I just want to make as much money as I possibly can. Forget the rest of you, you know. I, know. I know you guys have lived through this and everything like that. You've gone through so much heartache with this club and everything like that. But now we don't have to have any competition. We can just be in this league forever now. It's okay, lads, don't worry. We'll play Real Madrid two times a month. It's like, where, where's, the, where's the joy in that? Who, who's going to Madrid away on a Tuesday night? And, and let's go on, moving on now to the second point. Um, the damage is done. Yeah, this hasn't actually happened yet. Yeah, this isn't official, but the, the clubs have gone out, they, they've mm -hmm. signed it. And that speaks volumes again. As I said, yeah, it, it, this isn't in full force yet. It, it's not happened, but the damage is done because the, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know, I feel sorry for some of the players. I feel so sorry because they're they're just having to deal with this. You feel so sorry mm-hmm. for them. I've never ever saw anything like this in my life. It, mm-hmm. It's unbelievable, isn't it? You, you feel so sorry for the players. And like, as a fan, it feels so strange because we're against the club for signing it, not the play. It, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that, it's, that, it's basically because obviously the... I, I feel so sorry for my Mason Mount. He won't want this, but he's a Chelsea player. He's got a contract. They're paying his wages. They've just got to keep the mouth shut. It's. So, I'm sorry, but I've just. It, it, it's blowing my mind. I just. I can't get my head it's, around. Especially because I, I know obviously they've said about all the things saying, you know, you won't be playing for your national teams and things like that. You'll be excluded from any FIFA or UEFA competition. That's sort of Euros, World Cup, and things like that. And obviously, there, there's going to be some players who just think about it as like, I so I can earn half a million, a million pound a week in that. I'll, I'll go. I don't give a. I don't care about playing for my country and that. And then there's going to be players. I, don't, I mean, obviously, we don't know any of them personally, anything like. But Mr. Matt always gives that sort of that awe of that things like, you know what? Actually, I don't really want to. Do I want to play for. England. I want to try and win World Cups for my country. And there's always, I, there's going to be that sort of divide where it's going to be. Do you want to be in this? elite competition which isn't a competition at all or do you want to play football do you love the game or do you love the business that's what it is it is that what it's going to be for those players well, and football, coaches as well yeah because yeah. I, mean, I know i know there was obviously with Mourinho being sacked today i don't know how true it is obviously that the reports were saying that he refused to uh, go out with the players today at the training ground as, as a Stance against the side. Again, I don't know how true it is, and it'd be interesting if someone like Mourinho, you know, this elite manager with this, you know, historical record that he's got, if he's one that is refusing this, this sort of thing, that's huge. Especially Klopp as well. He's he's always been against the thing. If he comes out and says, "Okay, you do that," I have no interest in in getting involved with anything like that. It'll be massive because, I mean, yeah, you'll have your money. You'll have, you may have your players and things like that. But if you don't have any interest, you know, if you might have your three world-class top superstars and that one amazing manager, but if that's all you've got, what's the point in it? Because all of a sudden now you're just going to be, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll just kick about for 90 minutes each week and no one cares. It's also going to be interesting to see how this unfolds as well. Because, well, not interesting. It, mm. It's just let's see how it unfolds. Right, it's going to be intriguing. Yeah. See what I say. How, let's how, see it, all how it unfolds out. because obviously we don't we don't know what's going to happen yet. And and like obviously, um, in ten minutes' time, we've got Monday Night Football kicking off. So yeah. let's see what. I don't think anyone cares about that game. I think Harry they just Neville want to see Gary and, and, Harry and Gary and Jamie. I have to say. But, so uh, let, let's, let's get on to our next point because there is 10 minutes until that. We don't yes, want to be yes. um, So what it means for the fans, I'm going to personally say my quick perspective and then I'll throw it over to you, Tom, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, so my personal perspective, what it means for fans. So I don't know, like with my channel and stuff, Obviously, viewers will come and go and at different points and stuff like that. But if you didn't already know, I am Northern. Um, <laughs> I am from Cumbria and I am based in the Midlands quite a lot from uni there. But I am originally from Cumbria and I'm back here now because like uni's coming to an end and stuff like that. I'm Northern. Um, with Chelsea... I already, from when I was especially like a school and sixth form, when I was younger, it was hard to get to Chelsea games. It was really difficult. Um, getting tickets was difficult. Getting there was difficult. Just everything was difficult. And being a Northern Chelsea fan has been incredibly difficult for me. Some people that have maybe walked in halfway through would just see me going to games week after week. It's, it was never like that for me until I went to university, okay? Yeah, I was going quite a bit to away games and um, to home games, but... But now, like, well, and before the pandemic, we were going a lot. I was going on my own with my dad, with Tom. It, it was it was getting heavy. The games I was going to it was heavy. It was fantastic. I was loving it. But for like something like this to be mentioned, football would be taken away from me. Like it would be gone. That would be it. Like 
it's hard enough. It's been hard enough for me in my life anyways, as I mentioned, to get to games and stuff and to get tickets and everything. Ticket availability. If you're a Chelsea fan, you know what that virtual waiting room's like and what it's like to get tickets. It's very difficult. So for, if this was this Super League actually came in, that'd be it, be gone. And, and that actually breaks my heart because I've already struggled so many years anyways. But I, that's all fans... It, I'm sure it would go for a lot of fans, even if you lived in London. But being a Northern fan, it's, it's impossible. And it's it's so, so upsetting. And as I'm coming to the awards, the end of finishing uni now, um, and, yeah, I wouldn't be able to afford to go to these games. It's it's mm -hmm. heartbreaking. It, it's been something that's been took off us, and it's what we live and breathe. And mm -hmm. how can you cope with that? And it, it is obviously quite very I don't know I am getting a bit emotional because it means everything like it's absolutely everything and imagining it and do you know something we're going through a pandemic like it's absolute disgrace like how mm -hmm. how do they have the audacity to do yeah. this we're going through a global but, pandemic but like I said they were just take taking advantage of everything like that yeah get a quick book and things like that Now's the like you say you know because fans aren't allowed in stadiums let's do it now it's absolutely disgusting but yeah like I say you know the fact that uh you say obviously from Cumberland obviously I'm not from London from up in the Midlands as well things like that you know try and best go to at least one, maybe two Chelsea games a season. I'll see work things, I'll see money and then for even when I was young. I, I, I even put a Twitter last night saying about how, you know, far, far obviously went to Munich, spent a small fortune to get to Munich to watch Chelsea win the Champions League and, you know, to feel so disconnected from that. I know we, we all know we've been born into the greatest era of the club so, you know, can't really say, but, you know, my, my daddy was a Chelsea fan, his friends were Chelsea fans, so that's where I got it all from. Just because I'm from the Midlands doesn't mean, you know, because everyone is always, like, oh, you're just going, no, I just so happened to be born into a Chelsea family in this era. I got lucky. And if I, but like I said, I've never Midlands felt so disconnected. And I've even turned out, I've said, oh, if this all goes ahead and Chelsea, that I have, I do not want any affiliation with Chelsea Football Club. I would not, it's not a Chelsea Football Club. Because we're well, not playing football, you might as well just just change it to I don't know, well, just Chelsea Globetrotters, whatever. You know, just re <laughs> rename that club. It doesn't matter. Rename Stamford Bridge. Call it the the Toyota Yokohama Stadium. Do whatever you want. Because I'm not going there. I refuse. I will flat out refuse. I I will more than happily go to my local club and say I will give them twenty pound on the ball on the door I will go spend 15 quid on a scarf I will give them as much money as I possibly can because they're the team that deserve it they're the little ones like you say in the pandemic they're the little team that need it and you've got all these just billionaires getting richer and richer basically all just going around saying here is 100 million okay I'll tell you what I'll take 100 million have you 100 million back that's all that's going on it's ridiculous it's stupid and it's sick and I hate everything about it my friend, well, Luke, Tom, I, I never actually mentioned this earlier. <laughs> Me and Luke were talking earlier. Um, and Luke said, like, Emma, how would you, like, what would you do if, if this actually happened? And I said, do you know something? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's take each step at a time right <laughs> now. We'll get to that. Like, this, I'm finding it quite overwhelming. Like, and I saw a lot of people saying on social media, um, like I actually saw an Arsenal fan this morning say like I feel incredibly anxious today and I do like it's it's taken a bit to sink in like it's quite overwhelming isn't it like we've never really saw any of this and do you know something if it wasn't bad enough for us all with not being able to go to stadiums and everything and the pandemic and then like football soccer time and everything like that if it wasn't bad enough mm -hmm. this is just like like what what are they trying to do to the fans I don't care about well, they don't know no, they're, they're, I, again, you know, I, it doesn't even feel like we're customers anymore. They no. don't care about us. They just pick, pick the slaughter to them. That's all it's, we are. It's it's but absolutely yeah, the, the, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And, and you know, so we could sit here for hours and talk about how mm -hmm, bad it is. Mm -hmm. But 
I've just never ever witnessed something as bad as this in, in football. On the, on the way, yeah, on the, on the way no. home to it, on the radio, listening listening to Five Live, the, uh, it was Charlie Austin on there, and I was like, they hadn't really sunk in, but he, he said, and they were saying, yeah, I said, what do you think it'll do? He turned around and said, it'll rip football apart, and I was sat there, and it just hit. It just sat and just think this sport that we've all grown up with, loved, played, watched, lived, breathed, just gone like that. I mean, like the because real football is like the non-league. It's the Leamingtons. It's going. It's the socialising. You're going. You know, it's not. You just go and see your mates on the terraces. It's mixing with and having jokes with the opposition fans over a beer and it's just all that and for it all to be just torn apart by well especially in England by six businessmen you know this a hundred and odd year old football get this game ripped apart by six greedy people it's you can't, you just can't put it into words. Can I just say something though? Let, let's see how it unfolds. But I was having a discussion with my dad earlier actually, and the fans aren't going to allow it to happen. And you know, Summer, I'm actually quite concerned. Like, it, it, this could be something very, very serious could, could happen as a result of this. Like, this protest's already going down yeah. at Stanford Bridge tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Obviously, th- there's going to be trouble, maybe, isn't there? You can sense yeah. there's trouble. Like, p- some fans will be absolutely... Everyone's so frustrated by this pandemic anyways and not being able to go to games. There could be riots. Honestly, I, 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 I this think... could be a very, very scary, mm-hmm. scary time. I was, I was saying that because obviously maybe Dortmund and things like that, the Dortmund, the Bayern, the PSG, I think PSG, that sort of thing, with the Qatar, they've got to be, with the World Cup coming, it's basically got to be in the pocket and be nicey nice, things like that. Bayern, I'm not 100% sure about. In fact, Dortmund, I'm not 100% sure about either, honestly. I know everyone's saying about, oh yeah, they've got the 50 plus one more and things like that, but at that point, with Dortmund, you know, the club has been on the edge of banks, on the edge of going out of existence and this, the fan base has built it up to what it is now. This global, you know, this everyone knows everyone knows Dortmund because of Borussia. And so, if we were Dortmund were to go into that, I could imagine that, which may well even happen tomorrow at Chelsea. I only just thought about that there. But any the bus to go into the stadium, you want to play, you've got to get through this. 20,000 people wall. It is, it's so going to no, that You're not getting through. That, that bus is being crowded. and They are not getting off that bus. That game is being forced. You can't play that game. It's going to be horrendous. You know, uh, it's, all, all it's for, because I know this never said about the, the legacy fans sorts of thing. And they want to do it. Well, obviously, without being, because it's all stereotypical, saying, oh, it's just the foreign fans coming over and sitting down to watch a game, things like that. But it'll be that sort of that, that fan that one that doesn't really like football, but it's like, oh yeah, I, I'm I'm going to that Super League. I'm I'm on my holidays. I'm I'm going to Madrid for the week, and there's a, a Super League game. I'll, I'll go to that, and it's just going to be that, and that's all it's going to be. And the owners they're not going to care at all because they're getting all the grants and all the money from all these you know all the streaming services things like that. But it's when it's going to you're going to if anyone is ever going to sit and just watch that game. It's just going to be complete. So it's going to be worse than what it is now with no fans in. It's just going to be people sat there munching yeah. their hot dogs, drinking their Coca-Colas, and just... It's going to be... It's going to be a business. Come, come it's in, going to be... Yeah. Coming from a personal perspective now as well, though, just something like this, even my channel, like I'm a match day going fan of vlogging, vlogging at games. Yeah. I'm a fan channel. All of us, mm-hmm. like, we won't be there anymore. There's just so many <laughs> angles and perspectives yeah. to this. Just everything. Some some people that you might not even think about, like, it affects everybody. And, and mm-hmm. I said, like, me, for example, like, I, I know, like, it's not about me any of this, but, like, do you know what I mean, though? Like, just looking from a personal perspective, yeah. though, you just think, like, fan yeah, channel. It's, it's, it's going to have repercussions on every level. It's going to go from 
the the chap that sells the hot dogs and cleans the toilets all the way down to the fans, you know, the, the little lad that has got his first Champions League ticket, he's going on Tuesday night, he's going to Stamford Bridge to watch Chelsea play Porto. He's never going to have that feeling. It's just going to be, oh, we've got Real Madrid this week. And then we've got Real Madrid, all of the, the fantasy of it. You've, you've lost it. You've lost it. And so it's just, it's not, it's football, it's business. It's stupid. Yeah. Um, okay. So we should, we should probably cut it here, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. Thank, you. Football Thank you for watching. Um, and let me know your thoughts, guys. I'm sure this won't be the last video, but it's unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to do with my channel right now. I don't know if I'm doing a review tomorrow night or what, to be honest. Literally, Dad said to me what? Earlier, There's not going to be a football game. They're not, they're not going to be able to get off the bus. Dad, Dad said to me earlier, he was like, oh, I need to go home and do food shopping that tomorrow night. And I was like, yeah. And then he was like, oh, but we don't want to miss the Chelsea game. I said, do we not? <laughs> I was like, do we Chelsea game off? I'm not Who's Chelsea? Football, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. That Burring, London, Chelsea. Thank you for watching. Um, and I usually say up the Chelsea after a video, but I don't feel like that. So. Up the brakes. What does that mean? Oh, let me, let me. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. <laughs>